Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to add to our uh, ability functionality, and we will be adding conditions like we have added to uh, our status effect system earlier. So going to our ability, we want to add, and also I can remove the show inherited value so we get a little bit less of a clutter here. Uh, we want to add essentially similar as a status effect. So we will be creating, we don't need to go into too much details because we already have done this once before, uh, but we we'll add another uh, variable and we'll call this one use uh, required tags. So this will be a gameplay tag container which will consist of all the different um, tags that we will have to have to be able to use this ability in case we need any of them. Uh, in addition to that, we'll add another one, which we'll call uh, use prevention. Prevention uh, tags, I guess. So this will be a gameplay tag container as well. And these will be all the tags that actually prevent us to use uh, the ability. And we will be demonstrating this a little bit uh, in the end. Now, what we want to do is we want to have, since we have the functionality of, or the event of attempting to use an ability, this is essentially where we want to uh, start checking these things. So we can create some functions. We can create a function called um, um, is using ability restricted, let's say. Now, this is the one that's supposed to be checking against what um, our prevention tags are, essentially. So um, we want to uh, have our prevention tags drive uh, the functionality based on whatever other tags we have for our character. However, we want to have some we want to grab our uh, tags to be able to compare this against, right? So what we'll do is we'll get an owner. And we want to get um, an owner by class. And we want to get our gameplay tag containers because that's essentially what contains all of our properties, right? And these are the things that are uh, going to be limiting us. So we'll make sure that we have a valid container to begin with, or not container, but a component, like so. And if we have a valid component, then we can get the uh, active components from that, active tag container. So, and that is the container that we want to check against. So if we have, a, what would happen there? If we have a situation where we don't get a valid uh, component by class, then we essentially want to return because we don't have anything that, that restricts us essentially. And we want to have an output that is a Boolean that says if we are able to or not. So uh, let's say we call this one restricted. So getting a, a true value here would mean that we are not able to use uh, the ability. Since we don't have any uh, component to compare against, we'll just say restricted is false here. But in the case when it comes to um, the container that we actually get from the component, then we want to check if it has any of the tags that are preventing us from using this ability then we don't want to be able to uh, use this ability. So we will just say, uh, if it is, if it has any of these, then it is being restricted. So we'll just send this uh, Boolean output out like so for us to make use of. In addition to that, we also have the, um, uh, the what, what do you call it? Uh, the required tags, the tags that are 
necessary for necessary for us to to do this. So we will make a copy or a duplicate rather from the is using ability restricted, and instead call this. Uh, let's call it. It's using ability prerequisites fulfilled or something. Not the plus sign, we want to have a question mark. Something like that. That's a very long name, but it describes fairly well what we're trying to do. Prerequisite. Prerequisite. Requisite. That looks improperly spelled. So instead of doing it, don't spell it like me, spell it properly. Uh, yes. Inside of this one, uh, we have essentially the exact same code. Uh, but we want to do this slightly differently because in this case we need to have uh, this is required tags we don't want to have has any tags we instead want to check has all tags and we don't want the prevention tag container we want the required tag container like so and instead of calling it restricted we will call it um, allowed so that means that if we have all the required tags, we will be returning true. So we'll hook it up like so. If we don't have, this is an edge case, and here you sort of get to decide yourself what you want to do. But in the case we don't, we are encountering a character that doesn't have a gameplay tag component. Um, do we want to allow it or not allow it to use an ability? Uh, I will set allow as default. Um, so we don't run into any issues with that in case the, we need it later on. But yeah, this is a preferential thing and you maybe want to have it so that every actor has a gameplay tag component to check against. And in this case, maybe you want to make sure that it's uh, set to false in case it doesn't, uh, it, it runs into an actor that doesn't have it. Yeah. Now let's create a function that encompasses all of this, essentially. So we want to have something like uh, can use ability question mark, something like that, where we call on both of these functions and maybe any other functions that you want to make use of to check if uh, things are going as, uh, if you're allowed to use the ability or not. So first off, we're going to be checking if, is the ability restricted? We'll have a true or false here, we'll hook it up. So we'll make sure to have an output for this that is a boolean saying uh, can use ability. And in the case that we are restricted true, then we cannot use an ability. So we'll send it back as false. Uh, if it is not restricted, we will continue to check against if we have all the required tags instead. We will add another branch here and check against that. In the case that we have all of the allowed tags, or sorry, all of the required tags, then we go up here, otherwise we go down here. So if we have all of them, we can use the ability. If we don't have all of them, we can't use the ability. There we go. Going back to our event graph now, we can essentially call can use ability. And like so. And now we have this one driving the, the branch here to see if we're able to or not. So uh, we know that if we go to our character and press E here, we're gonna do the attack now, the ability. But if we go to our BP ability slash here now and we say, we want to add a required tag over here. And let's say we need to have the tag uh, poisoned. This doesn't make any sense at all, of course, but let's say we need it. If we now press the key, nothing's going to happen because we don't have the property poisoned. We did, however, I believe, have a... Did we not add poison at some point? What are we doing now? Status effect, temporary hit point loss. Okay, so here we have a 
tag that we're actually adding with our key. So we can say status effect immunity poison. Let's put that one as our test instead. So we'll clear all. We'll add the status effect immunity poison. We need to have that one to be able to uh, do this. So if I press E now, nothing happens. If I press zero, we're adding immunity poison. If you press E now, you can see we do the ability. So that functionality is working. Our required tags are uh, working now. Equally, we can test the other, the one that says prevention tags. So if we have, yeah, let's say we have actually the poison, immunity poison as a prevention tag, which means that we should be able to use our ability from the get go, which we can. But if we press zero and get the tag on us now, and we try to use it, we can't use the ability. And you might ask yourself, okay, well, that's all neat and fine, but what kind of a purpose does this have? And it has a lot of different uses uh, where only your imagination is the limitation, essentially. Because let's first uh, remove this so we don't actually forget that. Uh, you can have something like uh, um, uh, where you need to have done a certain specific thing first to be able to do a second thing. You can have like, if you wanted to, you could make combo chains out of this. So you could have like certain uh, abilities act as like a combo number one ability. And then you can use combo number two abilities only after you have done that because you have one of those tags on you or something. Um, you can say that you, you can only... Uh, cleanse yourself of uh, debuffs only if you actually have a debuff on you, for example, otherwise it doesn't make sense to cast it. Um, uh, th there's like all kinds of different things that you can use as either requirements or as preventions to have your um, ability system and your gameplay framework work very easily by, because you just have to go in and configure them on, all, on an ability basis, right? So it's very easy to, to tweak your functionality when it's driven in that way. Uh, hopefully this will become more clear as we uh, add more things and I start to do some more uh, showcases of, of how we're going to be making use of this uh, gameplay framework. But hopefully your mind is starting to get some ideas of like, oh, this is what it could be used for. That, that's pretty cool and stuff. Anyway, I think that might be a good place to stop for now uh, until we start getting into even further functionality and abilities. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.